Good morning from a chilly Harlech. It is, it's been a great stop over here. I've got to be honest, really, really good stop over. Can definitely recommend Harlech Leisure Centre. So I'll give you a quick look round. Not a lot to see here. It's really, really quiet. It's peaceful. We've had a good night's sleep. Bab. Okay, so you can see where we're parked. We just tucked ourselves up against the wall over there. I don't think the swimming pool's open at the moment, um, but when we came in, it's a big car park. Got the castle up there, look. I mean, it was beautiful last night. The castle was all lit up. What a great place to be. Really, really quiet. We stayed where we stayed because we didn't want to put ourselves over by people's houses or anything. But over there is the reception area. And all I did when I got here was popped up into reception um, saw the little fella on reception, very nice people, very welcoming. Um, it cost £8 for the night and um, yeah, they just said that there wasn't any rush to leave. Now whether that's the same in the summer, I don't know, because I think you have to pay for daytime parking separately, but I'm not 100% sure because uh, I didn't ask about that. But um, yeah, it's, you can see all the houses on the hill over there, lovely place. I'm going to go and have a walk round now. Here's a bin over there and it was really quiet. You've got the railway line just the other side of this hedge here but it, I think it's the same line as where we stayed um, last night at Tawin and we didn't hear any trains. Well we heard the trains and the rubbish men came about the same time which is about six o'clock this morning. That's fine for us because we're up early anyway. So yes I could well recommend Harlick Leisure Centre for a stopover. Big car park Lots of space. Um, obviously in the summer maybe you need a backup plan if it's really, really busy. But it's quite easy to get to as well and it's very close to the beach. This is the main road that we came into Harlech. And you can see the castle up there. And literally just here, left hand turn takes you down to where the little road is that leads you to the leisure centre. And if you keep going all the way down to the end of this road, then you get to Minadon Car Park where we were last night, which is the entrance to the beach. It's by the, the golf course and, and the nature reserve. So I am now going to go and see if I can find a way up to the castle. I've just made it to the top of the hill. That is the biggest climb ever. So unless you're feeling fit, then don't even try. <laughs> Uh, you've got to walk up the road for most of the way, unless I find another way. But here is the beautiful Harlech Castle from the other side. There is a little car park here. It's a pay and display. But you wouldn't get a motorhome, a big motorhome in here. You'd probably get a camper. But getting up that hill would be a bit of a mission. But yeah, there's a little gift shop over there. All closed up at the moment. We're a really pretty little town here. Harlech Bistro. Very peaceful this morning, so I'm just going to have a look and see if I can find the rest of the town. The one thing I've noticed about the buildings around here is they're made up of quite big blocks of stone, so however they hoisted all this up here, who knows, all those years ago, but I mean they, the buildings are so lovely with these built out of these big blocks, you know, really, really smashing buildings. But this is a bit of a more main road. So I'm guessing there's another way in to drive up and it does say that there's car parking further down that road. So it might mean that there is somewhere a bit easier to park to access the castle. But uh, some little shops, there's an Indian restaurant across the road. I don't think there's much going down this way. A couple of little shops, lots of houses. There's a nice little shop here. And the news agents. And another hill. Gosh, you really would need to be fit to live here if you're walking around. There's little tea rooms, there's an estate agents, lovely houses. There is parking on the side of the road up here between nine and six, just for an hour. So no return within one hour. So that might be useful if you're in a car, if you can get a space. 
nice art gallery. And I'm just walking up further up into the town to see whether I can see this other car park. But it really is uh, a very lovely little town. All higgledy piggledy buildings. Little paraphernalia shop. Another bar and grill, plus cafe. Bar and grill here. And then you've got some interior design shops. And another cafe over there. It's all closed up this morning. Harlick Pottery, I can see in front of me. Post office. Little memorial. And I think this is probably the end of the little town centre area. Lots of benches around. You'd need them. <laughs> to have a sit down and rest. It's very hilly. Yeah, you definitely uh, wouldn't want to be walking up here every day. Oh, there's a motorhome down there. Somebody's got a motorhome. Brave of them. There's quite a lot of signposted walks as well. It looks like there's one up there that takes you up to picnic tables. And this here, this little area, there's a sign up here saying the site of the old town washery. So I wonder what that used to look like. I just can't get over the buildings. I do love old buildings. So yeah, that's about it, I think, really. I think the castle is the centrepiece of this town. And I'm sure um, in the summer it will be very, very busy. Um, I can't see the other car park. Maybe it's a bit further down. But a lovely high street. Definitely somewhere to come and have a little look around if you like little old shops and definitely worth visiting the, the castle if you've got time. So when you talk about a room with a view, look at this. Wow, getting up and looking at this every morning, stunning. And then looking out the other window and seeing the castle. I think there's quite a lot of holiday homes around here. Well, it just seems that there's not a lot of life in a lot of places, which you would expect at this time in the morning, lights being on and chimneys with smoke coming out. So I think there must be quite a lot of holiday cottages. But yes, all hills. Off we go, back up the hill again. Yeah, that's an Airbnb. It's got it in the window. And this one here has a sign saying uh, Castle Cottage. And the website and address, so that's another one, I guess. I found this little shop that's open, Seasons and Reasons, so I'm just going to pop in here because I forgot the staple of life, onions. So that's what I'm going to go and see for good. Here's Harlick Castle again. Spectacular. And there's a little monument over here I'm going to go and have a look at as well. So it does give you signs all over the place telling you where you can walk through the this is the Tourist Information Centre, the Nature Trail, down to the station, and toilets and everything. So if you get up here, then it's beautiful. Let's go and have a look what this monument is all about. Imagine building this. I just don't even think we could do this anymore. There's the monument with um, somebody riding a horse with what looks like a child on the back. There's a sign over here. Let's go and have a little look. Okay, the two kings. Okay, so the Mabinogian story of Branwyn is a lament over the folly and carnage of war. Branwyn, sister of um, Ben Digifran, the King of Britain, departed from the Crown Court at Harlech to marry the King of Ireland. Their son, the boy King Gwern, was filled, was killed in the war which followed. In the sculpture, the figure of um, Penny Guidefran, whether I've said that right, 
bearing the body of his nephew Gwern symbolises the sorrow burden that love can be. And there it is, you can read it for yourself if you want to have a little pause. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what this hill is like as well, while we walk down. Easier walking down than walking up, I'm sure. So, um, what today has in store for as well. Uh, Nick Diamond's probably just cooking his bacon and eggs now, so hopefully he'll have uh, had his breakfast by the time we get back. I thought I'd come out and do some filming and uh, just have some bran flakes when I decide to get back quickly. Um, we're going off to Crickia this morning, which is another town with a lovely castle right on the seafront. So I'm quite interested to go and have a look at that. And then we're going to be going down towards Putheli. And if we get a chance, I'll go around there today, otherwise it'll be tomorrow. And then we've actually booked a campsite for tonight because it's night three. And we will need uh, services, we'll need to fill up with some water, we need to empty our toilet. Um, we don't need electricity really, but if it's there we'll have it, obviously. But it looks like a nice little site. There's probably only going to be us there, from what the guy said. So it'll be nice and peaceful. I think there's a nice dog walk as well. But we're going to get to the beach this morning and get the dogs out. So you can hear all the water coming down these little streams. Benches on the way down. More from the way up, I would imagine. Yeah, lots of water coming down the hills. And just this stunning view of Harlick and I showed you the beach last night. Oh, it's such a lovely part of the world. I mean, you really can't go wrong coming up here. Um, you've just got to do your research, that's all. Because otherwise you're going to struggle where to stay if you're out of season. If you're in season, there's temps of campsites, absolutely loads. But if you're out of season, then you really need to, to plan it properly. Nice bend, so you can see these bends not really suitable for our 8 metre motorhome, which is why we stayed down at the bottom. Lovely cottages all the way down again. So one of the things I've got to do when I get to Crickia, first things first, is I've got to get to a place called Cricky Tech, um, which is a little gadget, computer gadget shop, because uh, Mr D forgot to bring the USB data stick thing so um, it just means that we can't take the data off the card we're going to be stumped otherwise otherwise our cards are going to be full and we won't have any means to film so that's got to be the first stop of the day there we are I can see us down there I can see us down there nice and peaceful oh, not too far we can find that little path then to have a cut through instead of walking the last bit of the hill. Get over the other side in case a car comes flying around the corner. <laughs> I've never been to North Wales before and ne definitely never been into Snowdonia area before so it's great. It's great to go somewhere new. Right, so that is the road. I came out I came out here by the train track, crossed over the train track, walked across, and then I walked up the road all the way up the hill. Now there's no alternative to put to go on part of the road, but if you walk up this way a little bit, just past that sign, the cafe sign, then there's a set of steps that will take you up kind of missing out a big section of the road, which is probably sensible. And then coming back down the pathway, this is where I showed you earlier on where you can cross the train tracks. So, so long as you're just careful and look and listen, then this is the quickest way into the leisure centre again. So, here we go, cross the train tracks. And out to come in, all quiet on the western front. Hop over the train track, through the gate, ah. and hey presto, you are back at the leisure centre, and there are we over there. So that gets off the corner, it uh, gives you five minutes extra. So I'm going to sign off now, and we'll get on our way to Crickieth.